we will look into the 20th lecture now in module 1, we will solve one more example in stored law, we will compare the results what we got from stored law, inference coefficient method and uh, Dunkerley. We will also give you a coding in this class that how we can invert a matrix just because you want to know the stiffness matrix from the flexibility matrix, let us try to do that. We will take an example now in stored law, let us try to solve this problem. take a 4 degree freedom system problem, let us say this is 4 k, 3 k, 2 k and k, this is m, 2 m, 3 m, 4 m, this is x 1, x 2, x 3, x 4. So, we will first solve the problem using stored law and try to find out the fundamental frequency in mode shape for this problem. Assume deflection, we want to enter the deflection. So, let us enter the values of k and m. So, I am entering the values as 4 k that is k 1, then m, then 3 k, 2 m. 2 k, 3 m, k, 4 m. These are the values of respective m and k values given in the problem. Let us start, I am interested in working out omega n, that is the first fundamental frequency. So, all mode shapes will be positive. So, let us start with the displaced proportions of the mass as 1, 2, 3 and 4 all are positive value, there is no 0 crossing. So, we are expecting to get the first frequency. So, let us find out the inertia force, let us take the mass out. We know that inertia force the proportional value of the displacement as omega square x i. So, it is going to be 4 omega square, m I have taken out here, so the multiplier of 4 is coming in. So, 6 omega square is 2 and 3, 3 and 2 again 6 omega square, 4 omega square. So, let us say 4 omega square is a spring force and mass out. spring deflection divide the force by the stiffness of the spring. Let us say m by k is out, I am taking k out here. So, this becomes phi omega square. So, let us say calculated deflection m by k constant out. We started with 4, 3, 2, 1, whereas we are getting 1, 2, 3, close to 4. So, let us let this be the assumed deflection now. Let us continue with the second iteration. So, this is my banded value now. We are not matching, therefore, one more iteration. This is the first scheme of iteration. Assumed value is 4, 3, 2, 1, obtained values are 1, 2, 3, 4 approximately. 
I have converted them to assume now, I am doing the second iteration now. Let us continue this now. The spring force The spring deflection calculated deflection. So, this is a second set. So, this becomes me assumed deflection. So, that is a ratio. So, there is no need to write m by k here. So, we start with 1, 2.066, 3.066, and 3.866. Anyway, we got the convergence of this except for this case. So, let us try to now revise it further. So, give me the values of the third and fourth iteration let us see. Are we getting the convergence the third iteration or not? What are the values of third iteration? 1, 2 point? Hmm. Three five. So this is the third iteration. So let us do one more. Can I have the values for the fourth iteration? values for the fourth iteration.
can you give me the values of the calculated deflection also it is required because then only we can work out the ratio can you give me the values of calculated deflection in terms of m by k yeah 10 point Point. So, the ratio now comes to 1. let us say anyway this is converged, this is converged, this is also more or less converged. In fact, this also 3, 5 and 4 let us say you can try one more. Let us assume that this is converged value because so now we can compute omega. So, 10.73 plus 22.87 plus 41.83 plus 65.9 of omega square m by k should be equal to 1 plus 2.3 plus 4.04 plus 6.4. So, can you get me the value of omega n? A by M and the corresponding mode shape is 1, 2.30, 4.04 and 6.40. That is what I got from stored law. Is there anybody who has got difficulty in following this table or this method? So, we have demonstrated one problem on 3 degree, one on 4, it is a similar way you can do that. Any difficulty? Finding? Let us derive the alpha matrix for this specific case. So, that we can have a Dunker lease as well as the inference coefficient results also. Let us give I give unit force here, in this case unit force here, in this case unit force here, in this case unit force here. So, the first degree, second, third and fourth degrees respectively. So, when I try to pull this mass towards the right by giving unit force, this spring will oppose the mass. Let us start from here. So, this spring will oppose the mass. So, mark both the directions parallelly for the spring. So, this is going to be 3 k of alpha 1 1 minus 2 1. Similarly, when this spring pushes this mass, this again will oppose because the mass will try to move to the right. So, the stiffness of the spring is 2 k of alpha 2 1 minus 3 1 because it is connecting 2 1 3. Similarly, when this mass moves towards the right this spring will try to bring it back. So, 4 k of alpha. Similarly, this spring will try to push the mass to the right and this spring will oppose the mass movement. 
the stiffness of the spring is k this is alpha 3 1 minus 4 1. All will happen with the second subscript as 1 because we are giving the unit force in the first degree. Similarly, give the unit force in the second degree the mass will move towards the right. So, this spring will try to push it back and I am marking both the arrows parallelly and the corresponding stiffness is related to 2 k. So, 2 k of alpha 2 2 minus 3 2 because it is connecting 2 and 3. So, when this mass is moving towards the right this spring will try to pull it back. this spring the 3 k 1. So, 3 k of alpha 2 2 minus 1 2 because it is connecting the coefficients of 2 and 1 and the second subscript stands for the unit force given at the second degree. When this mass moves towards the right this spring will try to bring it back 4 k of alpha 1 2. So, this spring will this mass will try to move to the right because the spring is pushing k of alpha 3 2 minus 4. Similarly, apply unit force to the third degree the mass is going to move to the right this spring will try to push it back. The stiffness of the spring is k alpha 3 3 minus 4 3. So, the mass is moving to the right therefore, this spring will try to bring it back 2 k of alpha 3 3 minus 2 3 3 and 2 3 and 2 are the degrees of freedom the second subscript 3 stands for the unit force given in the third degree. Similarly, this mass is moving to the right now. So, this spring will restore it back. So, the stiffness of the spring is 3 k alpha 2 3 minus 1 3 because these are the coefficients which are connecting the spring 2 1 1. The second subscript stands for the unit force separated to the third degree. This mass is moving to the right now. This spring will try to restore it back. The stiffness of the spring is 4 k that is what is here and alpha 1 3. The second subscript 3 stands that the unit force is applied at the third degree. Similarly, give unit force in the last degree of freedom this spring will try to restore it back. Stiffness of the spring is k alpha 4 4 minus 3 4. So, this mass will move to the right therefore, the spring will bring it back the stiffness is 2 k alpha 3 4 minus 2 4 because this spring is connecting 3 and 2. Similarly, the mass will move to the right this spring will try to bring it back the stiffness of the spring is 3 k and the coefficients are alpha 2 4 and 1 4. The mass will move to the right this spring will try to bring it back so 4 k of alpha 1 4. So, the second subscript 4 means that the unit force is unit force. is given at the fourth degree of freedom whereas, remaining all coefficients are respectively marked with the degree of freedom. Once this is done we can write the force equation I will remove let us take the first degree and write the force equation let us pick up here. So, 4 k alpha 1 1 plus 3 k of alpha 1 1 minus 2 1 should be equal to 1. 3 k of alpha 1 1 minus 2 1 should be equal to 2 k of alpha 2 1 minus 3 1 that is the second here. 2 k of alpha 2 1 minus 3 1 should be equal to k of alpha 3 1 minus 4 1 that is the third equation here.
the last one k of alpha 3 1 minus 4 1 is 0, there is no other force. So, this implies that k cannot be 0. So, this implies that alpha 3 1 will be equal to alpha 4 1. Substituting this back here, this goes 0, which implies that 2 k alpha 2 1 minus 3 1 will be 0, 2 k cannot be 0. So, this says alpha 2 1 will be equal to alpha 3 1. When I say alpha 2 1 is equal to alpha 3 1, I imply I put it here, this now sets to 0, this means 3 k cannot be 0. So, alpha 1 1 will be equal to alpha 2 1. I substitute this relationship here, this sets to 0 because they are equal. So, I get alpha 1 minus 1 by 4 k. So, which all will be 1 by 4 k because alpha 1 minus 2 1 is 3 1 and 4 1. So, I got the first column, I got the first column of the influence coefficient matrix which will give me 1 by 4 k. So, let me write down the matrix here, write down the matrix here 1 by 4 k, 1 by 4 k. Just for our understanding further, I will write one more force equilibrium equation for the second degree for our understanding, I will draw this. So, let us do it for the second degree here, 4 k alpha 1 2, this is for second degree of freedom, 4 k alpha 1 2 will be equal to 3 k of alpha 2 2 minus 1, 3 k of alpha 2 2 minus 1 2 plus 2 k of alpha 2 2 minus 3 2 will be 1, 2 k of alpha 2 2 minus 3 2 will be equal to k of alpha 3 2 minus 4 2. For the last one k of alpha 3 2 minus 4 2 is set to 0, k cannot be 0, this implies that alpha 3 2 will be equal to alpha 4 2. Substitute back here, this goes away, 2 k cannot be 0, this implies that alpha 2 2 will be also equal to alpha 3 2. So, this makes this term as 0. So, alpha 2 2 minus alpha 1 2 is 1 by 3 k, I substitute that here. So, 3 k is cancelled, this becomes 1. So, alpha 1 2 will be 1 by 4 k. Which is as same as alpha 2 1 which is here. So, the matrix is completely symmetric. So, I substitute back and get alpha 2 2 and then 3 2 and 4 2, I get the second column of this matrix now which is 1 by 4 k and 7 by 12 k. Once you get alpha 1 2 here, you can substitute back in this expression and you can find alpha 2 2. Once you know alpha 2 2, you can find 3 2 and 4 2 which are going to be same. I get the second column. So, similarly I can get the third and fourth column. I want you to write down them, but anyway I will fill up the matrix here. 
with any doubt for anybody in deriving the influence coefficient matrix directly like this from the force equations. Any doubt for anybody here? So, I will write down the remaining four column remaining two columns also. One by four k, seven by twelve k, thirteen by twelve k, thirteen by twelve k, one by four k, seven by twelve k, thirteen by twelve k and 25 by 12 k that is my so called influence quotient matrix it is nothing but the flexibility matrix I can invert this matrix and get the stiffness. Let us try to get the stiffness matrix for this problem before we proceed further. Let us try to draw the problem again. m 2 m 3 m 4 m 4 k 3 k 2 k and k first degree second degree third degree and fourth degree. Let us apply Newton's law and try to derive this stiffness matrix because I am going to write the equation of motion now. So, let us draw this separately. So, this is going to be m 1 x 1 double dot m 1 may be m the restoring force is going to be 4 k of x 1 and this will be going to push the mass back. So, I will get a force here which is 3 k of x 1 minus x 2 force stiffness into displacement will give you the force. Okay. Similarly, I can do it for the second mass also. Let us say this is m 2 x 2 double dot this way here when I move this, this spring is going to pull this back. So, this is going to be automatically 3 k of x 2 minus x 1. We already said this algorithm you start from x 2 apply this coefficient first and then the next one next. Similarly, when you move this, this spring will push it back. So, 2 k of x 2 minus x 3 because it is connecting 2 1 3. Let us take the third mass let us say this is m 3 x 3 double dot moving this way I am going to restore it which is going to be 2 k of x 3 minus x 2 and this spring will push it back. So, k of x 3 minus x 4 the last mass which is going to be m 4 x 4 double dot the spring will restore it back which is going to be k of x 4 minus x 3. So, I have the force equilibrium equations here now with the Newton's law. Let us write the equations of motion and from that we can pick up this stiffness matrix easily. So, let us do the first one m 1 x 1 double dot should be equal to minus of because they are all opposite 4 k x 1 minus 3 k of x 1 minus x 2 which will give me m 1 x 1 double dot plus 7 k of x 1 minus 3 k of x 2 plus 0 plus 0 is 0 these these are corresponding to x 3 and x 4 there is no value here. Similarly, I can do it from the second third fourth I will get the stiffness matrix. What I want you to do is invert this and see whether you are getting the same stiffness matrix as you get from here. Now, since it is 4 by 4 and n by n, it is difficult to invert it by hand because you require some mathematical support. So, there is an equation available here which is a simple program which can be used for inverting a matrix using a MATLAB program. 
So, you can use this MATLAB program, I will just read the program easily. So, the code is this CLC is clear screen, clear all, all these yellow written here are all commentary statements, okay. So, clear screen, clear all, M and M is the row and N is the column because you enter the number of rows and enter the number of columns. In this problem you will say 4 and 4. Then K0 is initialization of M and N because sometimes there may be some 0 error available in the system, it may take some values for M and N, initialize them. Then you call a new matrix alpha which is the inverse of a given matrix and let us say initially all values in this matrix are 0, okay. all values are zeros. So, you initialize it, then you start you, I also want the product of this because I am going to check whether the inverted matrix and the original matrix product becomes an identity matrix. So, I have a one more variable plot again initialize them. So, I run a loop for i and j i is the call i is the row and m is the column because it is varying from n and this is n. So, m is the number of rows and n is the column. Enter them and alpha matrix will be inverse of k. So, you will be able to get the matrix very easily. You can check this and run this program and you can check whether the k matrix obtained from the equation of motion here. I am sure all of you know how to write the equation of motion for the remaining 3 and get a k matrix. Okay. So, get a k matrix and check whether the inverse of this is as same as this. Do not be afraid that okay, there are 2 values 0 here will it be problem, you will just see I have checked it, it is perfectly ok. It will be an inverse perfectly, no problem on that. Now, our job is if I know the leading coefficients of this alpha matrix, I can quickly find the Dunker least frequency. Let us try to get the Dunker least frequency. So, 1 by omega square is m i delta i. In this case, is i to 4, and you give me the Dunker least value. m1, m2, m3, m4 are available to you and you already know the delta values leading diagonals, can you give me the value of Dunker least frequency which will lead to omega n as some value of How much? 0.316. Everybody is getting the same answer? Yeah, it will be 0 0.27. 0 0.27. Yeah, it will be 0.27. So, whereas we have got 0.31 there, 0.27 here, so it is again matching. Now, the major problem starts with the inference coefficient method where I want to set the matrix for iteration. So, what we have been doing is we are writing x1, x2, x3, l4 algorithm from that we multiply m i's and try to get the, the control matrix which is set for the iteration. Now, I will tell you here a shortcut how the control matrix can be directly written for inference coefficient method. So, I want the control matrix now directly for the inference coefficient method. Let us write the control matrix here. So, this is the vector which is getting iterated. We all know that omega square m by k will be a multiplier here in this control matrix. Okay. So, there is a 12k denominator here, let me take this 12 out. of x1, x2, x3, x4. This is the control matrix now for the first iterator, first frequency. So, the moment you take 12k out, there is a multiplier of numerator 3 here. Okay, there is a multiplier of numerator 3 here. Okay. 
this 3 multiplied with m 1 gives me only 3. So, in all the cases 3 is out therefore, 3. So, in this case there is a 3 numerator here because I have taken 12 as a denominator out here there is a 3 I multiply this with m 2 which is again 2 so I get 6 here. Whereas, the remaining 3 the 12 k is already in denominator so no problem. So, 7 with 2 14 remaining all 14. Similarly, go back to the third column, there is a 3 numerator here multiply with the 3 m. So, I get 9, remaining all I have 12 the denominator, there is no multiply the numerator available, 7 3 is 21, 13 3 is 39, 13 3 is 39. Let us go to the fourth column, I have 4 k, I have 12 k here, so numerator 3 multiply by m 4, so 12. Remaining denominators are 12, so no issue, no multiply in the numerator, 7 fourths 28, 30 fourths 52, 25 fourths 100. So, this matrix can be obtained in minutes, ok. So, be careful in multiplying the terms. So, let us do the same iteration of 1, 2, 3, 4 as we started with stored law with the same of 1, 2, 3, 4 and see what do you get. So, after 4 iterations, after 4 iterations, I get a multiplier which is 1 equals omega square m by 12 k of 129.96 of 1 which gives me omega s. Five. What do you get as five? So, if you compare the results of Dunkerley as point two seven seven, then stored as point three one, and iterate influence coefficient method omega one and phi 1 as 0 0.304 you see all of them are almost in the same range within an error of about 5 to 7 percent. So, all the 3 methods can be easily used. So, there is a very interesting assignment for you, you have got to write a code in MATLAB which will help you to solve the problem on stored law, problem on influence coefficient method, problem using Dunkerley and also a code for a classical Eigen solver. Of course, a classical Eigen solver code is available in the MATLAB as an inbuilt routine, but these three are not available. So, you have to submit this code to me within three working days from today by email to me directly. We will have weightage of this in the final exam later within three working days you have to submit the code directly to me by email to me. So, at I must have a problem of solved example of the problem taken in the class which will solve you all the 4, you will give me all the values and compare the percentage error between the methods. Only first 3 submissions will be taken, remaining I will not consider, only first 3 will be considered depending upon the time, just complete it, PDF it and email it to me, first 3 entry right or wrong only will be considered, fourth entry I will not consider. 
okay, no evaluation for the fourth entry onwards, only first three I will take, we will see. So, any doubt here, we will move on to the next method in the next class. So, we have consulted about four methods which are very interesting, which can be used for multi degree very comfortably, all are computer programmable, all are comparable, all results can be worked out with a calculator and I have solved the problem in the blackboard in 20 minutes using a fourth degree freedom system problem. So, one should be able to solve 6 degrees in about half an hour, if you have a computer code in few minutes you will be able to get omega and phi which is one of the major problem in many of the new generated structural form problems in offshore structures because you would not get omega and phi so easily. For getting omega and phi you must mathematically model them, go to software available, do a finite element modeling then try to do a free vibration and get omega and phi, it is a long process, but here it is very simple for a given form you were able to idealize them as a spring mass system model like this, you can easily get omega and phi as a first hand value, we can also compare them with four methods, you can see which is the correct value, you can see whether the structure is exciting as a designer within the frequency band of a wave input, so you can change the form. So, we are talking about dynamic analysis and design together now, so it is very easy for us to do, okay, thank you.